section. Um, so I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about uranium salts on a photographic plate. Um, basically, uh, the scientist a long time ago put these uranium salts on a photographic plate and he noticed that there was like an image that developed on the plate. It wasn't, it was just an accident, right? And so he later figured out that these were radioactive uh, particles. In other words, the radioactive particles had created this image. So he gets credited for discovering radioactivity. He won a Nobel Prize for physics, uh, and he shared it with Madame Curie. Okay. So what happens during nuclear decay? So I'm going to say something before we dive into this. Everything decays. Nuclear decay is something that happens naturally. There is a relationship, and we'll talk a little bit more about it in physics, but this is a high school class. But all matter decays. Everything emits an electromagnetic radiation. You guys do, because you're made of matter, all right? There's a relationship between energy and matter. Remember the E equals MC squared? That means that matter can be converted into energy. Because everything kind of decays, eventually all matter in the universe will convert to energy. It'll take forever for that to happen, um, but that is the reality of it. So what happens during nuclear decay? Well, during nuclear de decay, atoms of one element can change into atoms of a different element. So radioactivity is a process in which an unstable atomic nucleus emits charged particles and energy. Any atom containing an unstable nucleus is called a radioactive isotope, or a radioisotope for short. Radioisotopes of uranium, primarily uh, uranium-238, was the source of the radioactivity in this experiment. Now, it didn't start off as an experiment. It, it became an experiment. So about 26,000 years ago, more than 100 mammoths died at a sinkhole in Hot Springs, South Dakota. Scientists found the age of the remains by measuring the amounts of the radioisotope carbon-14 found in the mammoth's bones. Now, remember we talked about this before, about isotopes. Carbon-14, the carbon has an atomic mass of 12. Carbon-14, and we'll find out in a second, is bombarded with subatomic particles that gives them uh, an extra uh, two protons over time because that's not the stable measure for uh, carbon, it decays. So unlike stable isotopes such as carbon-12 or oxygen-16, radioisotopes um, spontaneously change into other isotopes over time. Nuclear decay um, occurs when the composition of a radioisotope changes. Uh, uranium-238 decays down to thorium-234, which is also a radioisotope. So what are three types of nuclear radiation? Well, there's al alpha particles, beta particles, and gamma rays, okay? Scientists can detect radioactive substance by measuring the nuclear radiation it gives off. Nuclear radiation is charged particles and energy that are emitted from the nuclei, that's multiple nucleuses, of radioisotopes. So an alpha particle um, has a plus two charge. Um, a beta particle has a negative one charge, okay? And then a gamma ray um, is electromagnetic radiation. It's not necessarily a charge, okay? So an alpha particle is a positively charged particle uh, made up of two protons and two neutrons. Um, the same as the helium nucleus but it doesn't have electrons. So if you were to take an, a, a helium nucleus and strip it of its electrons, we would call that an alpha particle. So we, we're, when, uh, let me preface this so it doesn't confuse you guys as I go through this. Particles exist. Particles are generated, split apart through nuclear reactions, and they bombard the Earth. The sun 
takes helium and hydrogen and fuses it together, then splits it apart. Uh, the sun is a big nuclear reactor, so it does emit particles. And stars all over the, the universe emit particles. They emit um, uh, different levels of radiation as well. And so we're going to talk about how these particles are impacted. Now, atoms, as we know it, are the organized attraction between electrons and these particles, and um, though they're formed through gravity and time, okay? So we're talking about things that are generated right now by the sun that bombard the Earth. Things that are generated by stars all over the galaxy that bombard everything, if, actually the whole universe. So these particles are flying through space um, there's not a lot, but they're, uh, they exist, okay? So an alpha particle is a positively charged particle. It's the same as the nucleus of a helium atom. Uh, when uranium-238 uh, sample decays, it emits alpha particles. So uranium-238, if you look up there on the periodic table, I believe uranium is like 235 or 236. So it has uh, some extra mass and so when it emits the alpha particle which is two neutrons and two protons then it jumps down to 234 okay um, an alpha particle has a plus two charge an alpha particle has a mass of four amus uh, the symbol for an alpha particle is uh, he4 and then the lower two and it shows that it has a mass and a charge so alpha decay nuclear decay that releases alpha particles is an example of a nuclear reaction. In alpha decay, the product isotope has two fewer protons and two fewer neutrons than the reactant isotope. So when uranium-238 releases an alpha particle, it actually does so in a manner that it creates a helium atom and the thorium atom, okay? So then beta decay, when uh, thorium will decay as well, it releases a negatively charged radiation called a beta particle. Now, a beta particle is an electron emitted by an unstable nucleus. So electrons can just float around, and when they do, we call those a beta particle, and the symbol for that is listed on the screen here. So during beta decay, the neutron uh, decomposes into a proton and an electron. All right? So it, I don't want to confuse you guys, but protons, neutrons, and electrons are made up of even smaller particles, and those particles have magnetic spins, and charges are formed from those spins. So a neutron can break down into a proton and an electron. The proton has a positive charge. The electron has a negative charge. At some point, the electron is released. So when a neutron changes, it changes into a proton and an electron, and the electron is emitted. Um, the beta particle is assigned an atomic number of negative one. A beta particle is assigned a mass number of zero, because electrons are very, very, very small. Remember that in the atomic mass of an atom or molecule, it's based on the number of protons and neutrons. Neutrons are a little bit bigger than protons because they're technically a proton and an electron. So in beta decay, uh, the product isotope has one more proton and one, few, one neutron fewer uh, than the reactant isotope. So the mass numbers of the isotopes are equal, but the emitted beta particle essentially has no mass. Uh, the balanced equation for a beta decay is you start with 238, or 234 thurion, and this is the number of particles. Uh, that breaks down into 234, so the mass pretty much stays the same but now you've got a different particle because you have an extra proton, right? 90 protons here, 91 uh, protons here, plus the emitted electron. So gamma decay is the third type of nuclear radiation. A gamma ray is a penetrating ray of energy that's emitted by an unstable radius. Gamma radiation has no mass and no charge. Like X-rays and visible light, gamma rays are energy waves that travel through space at the speed of light. Now that's one of your reading guide questions. So you can actually, technically, um, there can be 
uh, a gamma ray that's released too. And so when in that process, energy is usually released. Remember how Mr. Adams started by saying that matter can be converted into energy? The energy that's released is in the form of light energy or a gamma ray. So it's not visible light, it's electromagnetic radiation. Like X-ray is electromagnetic radiation, gamma rays are electromagnetic radiation, ultraviolet, all those things are forms of electric, electromagnetic radiation. So the penetrating power of nuclear radiation, nuclear radiation varies with the types. So some of these particles can go through surfaces. So alpha particles can't go through a sheet of paper, but beta and gamma particles can. Um, gamma rays, because it doesn't have a mass, can also go through metal. And it can even go through things like cement. Okay? So balancing nuclear equations, um, if it's a reactant isotope, so now we're going to talk about reactive isotopes decaying. Um, you basically just have to know what's being released. If it's a beta particle that's being released, that's two protons and two neutrons. So you just subtract the protons from the pro atomic number and then remember to subtract uh, four from the atomic mass. Uh, and then remember that the symbol for a beta particle is this uh, helium, basically. Um, without the electrons. And then if you um, go through, and I'm just going to, these are available for you guys to look at. This is, this is the carbon-14 dating. So carbon-14, carbon normally has six protons, uh, but when it has two additional, uh, it can have extra, extra stuff in it. So the atomic mass for carbon should be 12. But carbon-14 actually has an atomic mass of four, right? It should be 12 because there's six protons and six neutrons. So what happens is it will emit um, particles. And then when it emits the particles, oops, it changes to uh, something else, OK? Does that make sense? Again, I'm not going to go through all these. I'm going to leave these with you so you can take a look at them. But these are different types of decays. Okay. Um, how does nuclear radiation affect atoms? And nuclear radiation can ionize atoms. So these particles can collide with a, a stable atom and then have an impact on it. So background radiation is nuclear radiation that occurs naturally in the environment. Radioisotopes are uh, out and about in the air, water, rocks, plants, animals, and they all contribute to background radiation. Cosmic rays are streams of charged particles, mainly protons and alpha particles, uh, from outer space. Those are emitted from all those stars I was talking about. Background radiation levels are generally low enough to be safe. So uh, a couple years ago, I did research at Northwestern University, and uh, it had to be in the basement of the basement of their laboratory, and we had these big, thick, black um, cloths, because Mr. Adams was doing work with lasers. Laser is a type of um, electromagnetic radiation, and we wanted to filter out as much background as we could. So there's sunlight that we get, that's a form of radiation but there's a part that we don't see with our eyes that's emitted. You have radiation all around you, okay? And so we tried to filter out the radiation from the sun by being in the basement of the basement, and we had these big, huge, thick, black curtains that, mm, I can't remember if they were lined with lead. They were heavy, though. They were hardcore. And so I had to work in the dark and I, I couldn't even have my computer screen when I was doing my work. I had to put a blanket over my head so I could look at my computer screen while I was in the lab. So, and that was just to filter out all the background noise as much as we could to get accurate data about the lasers. Um, so that, that was a cool experience for Mr. Adams. Um, effects of nuclear radiation. Most rocks contain small trace amounts of radioactive elements. 
Um, this particular uh, mineral is an important source of uranium. When nuclear radiation um, exceeds background levels, it can damage the cells and tissues of your body. Alpha particles can cause skin damage similar to being uh, burned. Beta particles um, can damage tissues in the body more than alpha particles. Uh, gamma rays can penetrate deeply into the body, exposing all organs. So when somebody has cancer and they do like a proton treatment or a radiation, really what's going on, let me go back to this one slide. What they're doing is they're firing a particle into somebody's body where the tumor is and it's killing the tumor. It's literally breaking the tumor's atoms and molecules apart. It's causing those um, molecules and atoms to change. They, it literally breaks it down. But if it's a living thing, and, and uh, cancer is something that grows and lives, uh, it literally breaks it down. Now, the other bad thing is that you don't want this to happen to your DNA. Um, so we, we don't like radiation. That's why when you take an x-ray, they put lead things over you. The people that take your x-rays, they wear these little badges to measure how much radiation they're exposed to because we don't want to hurt anybody. Radon gas is also really bad, too, because it's a source of alpha particles. Um, it can lead to lung cancer. You don't want to be exposed to radon gas for too long. So radon gas is produced underground as uranium rocks and the soils decay. Um, uranium will give off particles. Those particles will, so if I have uranium way down here, those particles will find, they can go through cement. They'll go through the cement and they'll penetrate the house. Um, it could even be in the water. Um, and so you want to be careful. So that, that's why you see on TV, they'll say, have your house tested for radon gas. What devices detect nuclear radiation? A Geiger counter, okay, and film badges. That's one of your reading guide questions. A Geiger counter is used, uh, it has a tube that's filled with gas, and when the nuclear radiation enters the tube, it ionizes the atoms of gas. Um, we, I, have some, I, I have some Geiger counters in the cabinet. Um, the ions produce an electric current, which can be measured the greater the amount of nuclear radiation, the greater the electric current produced. So a Geiger counter, that's the little ticking noise it makes. It goes click, 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 and it'll click faster um, if you have more uh, radioactivity. So firefighters use this, people that respond to radioactive. I, Mr. Adams lives in Bridgman, Michigan. Uh, that's where the cook DC Cook nuclear power plant is. Um, they're constantly monitoring uh, a bunch of things. Um, in the city of Bridgman, they have these little stations where they put water in a container and they check the water. They, that's how they check to see how radio, like, is the, um, is, is there any radioactivity leaking from the power plant? Um, many people who work with or near radioactive materials wear film badges. Um, basically almost like the original, um, the original discovery of radioactivity. These film badges, if there's radioactivity, will develop a spot on it. Um, based on the exposure, um, they can tell how much, um, how much radioactivity somebody's been exposed to. So just a couple quick questions to summarize. What happens when an atomic nucleus decays? Um, it's just an unstable nucleus that emits charged particles and or energy. During alpha decay, a nucleus emits an alpha particle or what's an alpha particle? It's a helium nucleus, right? Wait, isn't that a beta? No. I gotta double check that. I think that's was alpha the yeah no alphas yeah I'm sorry I got confused yeah so it's a helium nucleus two protons and two neutrons um. 
And then the last one is what is uh, which isotope balances the nuclear equation, uh, the alpha decay of thorium-232. So alpha means that you're going to decrease by two protons and two neutrons. So that means that this number here will decrease um, by two and this number will decrease by four, right? So that would be C, okay? Nuclear radiation can damage cells in the body um, by ionizing atoms in the molecules of the cell. A Geiger counter uh, measures radiation by detecting ions formed when charged particles pass through a gas tube. That's true. And that is it. Any questions? Okay.